As you can tell from my accent, I'm from South Minneapolis. <laughs> I'm done. Uh, we're providing Voice Hive at this event today as a Q&A. It's a um, web-based platform where you can literally log in, send your question, and the presenter can see them on their tablet or their laptop in real time. We're at seven different sessions. Is there somewhere we have them listed? We had the crowdfunding panel earlier with um, the movers and shakers that were up here, and we had 43 questions. And what was interesting about some of the questions that were coming in, some of them were dumb, so that if someone had been picked out of the audience and said, what's your question, you would have wasted everybody's time. So it was a nice filter for that. We're using it for other things too. We just didn't have time to put together a talk because we're kind of busy. Voice Hive, V-O-I-C-E-H-I-V-E. That's it. Uh, hi, my name's Dan with a company called Heroic. Uh, we do free recommendations for home service providers. Uh, so think Angie's List, except um, it's free. And then the recommendations from friends as opposed to ratings from strangers. So we use social media connections uh, to make it a little bit more relevant. Um, but we are also running a promotion right now where we're crowdsourcing the best service providers from around the Twin Cities. So if you have a uh, carpenter, craftsman, someone that you've worked with that you really like, uh, you can recommend them for a chance to win free house cleaning for an entire year. Uh, that's beheroic.com. Thank you very much. Slash who do you love. Hi, my name is Eric Rantipa, and I just want to call everybody's attention to the uh, functional programming programmers meet and greet ad hoc session uh, later this afternoon. So if you are interested in functional programming or using functional programming, either Haskell Closure, F Sharp, OCaml, Lisp, Scheme, whatever, and you want to meet other people who are interested in functional programming, come to the ad hoc session. Uh, it's out there, I think, at 250 uh, in, I think, the Kansas. Anyway, that's all I had to say. Thanks. Um, I wrote a uh, basic uh, app in 2008, and I've, it's evolved over time called TC Transit. If you ride the bus or ride the, ride the light rail all the time, um, you guys go to tctransit.mobi slash your route number, and it'll t give you uh, real time updates of um, when your bus is coming. So here's a quick example, and you can look on your phone, you get more, a better example. Um, go to Route 6, and then uh, go southbound, First Avenue and First, um, First Street North. more people are probably going to it, so it's going to be slow now. <laughs> um, and it says, uh, your next bus comes in nine minutes, and included is a map of where your stop is. Um, most routes with real-time data c uh, will show a where's my map, uh, where's, my where's my bus map. It'll show the location of your stop and then show geographically where your bus currently is in town, so you kind of get a good idea how far away your um, bus is. So there's a few metrics to guess whether you have, or a few metrics to help know whether you have to run to your stop. Uh, there's also street view. And my other favorite feature is if you hit uh, add to home screen, and if you hit, s when you add it to your home screen, the icon will be your route number, and it's southbound or northbound. So it's a web-based app, but it has some handy little features like that. That is all. Yeah, it's tctransit.mobi. Uh, some person squat is squatting on tctransit.com, which would be a lot easier, better, and they won't sell it to me. So there you go, tctransit. <laughs> yes. My name is Rich Hogue. We're trying to do the same thing in northern Minnesota. Uh, we've got a group called Silicon Lake Show. We're trying to play off the more famous Lakeshore, Silicon Valley. Uh, we will have a website up shortly where, um, thank you, sorry. S okay, we're starting uh, the same idea up north. If you have any interest, you're from up there. Silicon Lakeshore will have a website up shortly. We've got a board. If you go to LinkedIn and search on the Silicon Lakeshore group, you'll find us. Um, my domain is northstarnerd.org, so you can find us that way also, thanks.
All right. Uh, our project's trackif.com. Basic concept is if there's something you see on the web you don't want to immediately purchase or doesn't exactly have what you want at this moment, trackif will track it for you. Uh, for instance, I had a Nexus 7. I wanted the Nexus 7 dock. It was always out of stock everywhere I wanted. Hooked up trackif.com, said track if it comes back in stock. Fired me an email, I could buy it right away. Another, um, in addition to the website, there's mobile applications. You're in a store, TV's too much. You can scan the barcode, it'll recognize it, tell you the current price in the store you are. You can say, send me an email when it hits this dollar amount. It's all done. Web based, uh, very simple. I tried to find a book written by Luke, thought he might have one. This is the only thing that came up. Probably not your book. Um, <laughs> clicking the bookmarklet or the either the extension or the bookmarklet does an inlay, analyzes the data, tells you what they found, tells you the price. You can set up a customized rule for in stock, non stock, price goes up, price go down, works on stocks, works on real estate, trackif.com. Not looking for money, not looking for products or people to pay, but if you just go out to view140.com, you can kind of search Twitter for images. It was just a hack I did one weekend just because I was interested to see uh, what people were posting. And interestingly enough, the reason why I'm talking about it is because uh, the biggest spikes of uh, traffic on the website was actually natural disasters. So it's kind of like an eerie twist on it. People were like, uh, when the, when the uh, bridge collapsed here versus uh, the hurricanes and stuff recently, you can like go out and see what's happening real time on Twitter and it just shows you a stream of images. So viewin40.com, check it out. You might break it. <laughs> so what do you guys think about that? Is that true? Uh, one plus one equals one. <laughs> so if it's in, what if it's in base two? Uh -huh. If it's binary math, does that still work? Or uh, anyway? I just thought that's, I just think it's fun to, to show that, but um, I've been thinking a lot about binary um, on and off just because it's kind of an interesting thing. So to me, uh, and by the way, this is uh, the binary for um, hola amigos. Um, so hola amigo. Um, but binary is really just something that's composed of two parts or two things. So it doesn't have to necessarily be um, ones and zeros, though that's what we think of it is. And like hardware thinks of it as like on and off and stuff like that is like a pulse of electricity or you know really not really fancy things but uh, so I got to thinking about that and what you could do with that so what if one equals cow and zero equals boy so that's the same thing um, that's the same as the first slide right here just using you know cow for one and zero for boy so you get a bunch of cowboys, and that says, hola, amigos, again. Um, okay, so what else can we do with that? Um, that seems like kind of a fun idea. Um, what if we take and we make one be a space, like a literal space on the keyboard, and zero is a tab on the tab key, because they have to be different, right? But those are both invisible, so I thought that might be fun. Um, then we get this, and I made the tabs um, black background color, and the spaces are white background color. And that's also, hello, amigos, um, hi, friends. Uh, okay, well, that's cool, because now we got invisible binary and, uh, you know, invisible skateboard, invisible shopping cart. There's lots of things you can do with the invisible concept, invisible snow shovel, invisible bike, which is a good one. There was also an invisible bike crash where two cats crashed on their invisible bikes. <laughs> yeah, I thought about putting that on there, but anyway, I got too many of them and kind of got bored with it, so... Uh, that's that. Um, I created a little script, little web page that's simple, but it basically has a, you've seen those like, hey, I want some text, I want some binary from that. You put your text in and you hit encode and you get some binary. Well, mine does that, but it allows you to put in anything you want. Um, we could pull that up, I guess. I don't know if I'm out of time or whatever, but uh, yeah, so um, hey, me, computers. So you can encode that. By default, it's space and tab, but we could put like an X and like a MN or something. 
and you encode it. You get a bunch of M's and X's, and then you decode it, you know, you get it back. So you can have fun with that. And uh, yeah, that's, that's it. The uh, address is like, what is it? I don't know. I had the slide, now it's gone. It's just mediaupstream.com slash sandbox slash invisible dash JS. And the source code is on GitHub if you want to like check out the little, it's pretty basic, super simple script. But anyway. Ferentz. I'm a graphic designer and illustrator. Um, I just wanted to say my public I designed the shirt. Can I get a bar? Uh, it's my first time coming here and it's been really what? awesome. Yeah, it is. I'm sorry. You designed the shirt for what? Uh, it's been like everybody here. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, I just wanted to say hi and thank you for letting me be here today. It's been fun. Hello, go to bargainstockfunds.com uh, over the course of the coming days. Uh, there's not much on there right now. It's my first Ruby on Rails site, my first serious Ruby on Rails site. And it will feature, uh, and it will feature uh, mutual funds and ETFs from a value investor's point of view. Uh, it'll allow you to select the very cheapest uh, uh, mutual funds and ETFs according to criteria like price to book value ratio, price to cash flow ratio, and other valuation yardsticks. Again, there's uh, not much there if you go look right now, but uh, a lot of stuff will be coming online in the days to come. Bargainstockfunds.com. All right, so some of you may know that uh, I moved to Silicon Valley, uh, and this is the company that I work for, and we let you create a search engine on the fly. Uh, so to demonstrate that, I'm going to create a search engine for my website. Um, just type it in. Um, and what will happen is you'll be able to see it crawl the website in real time, and then you'll get a search box, which you can uh, uh, put on your website with a little bit of JavaScript. Um, so it is working, hopefully. Here we go. Okay, so it crawled my website, not very many pages. Um, what you can do then is you can search, and um, it actually hasn't really finished yet. <laughs> so I'll switch over to one that really exists. Um, what I wanted to show you is some analytics. Oh, man. 
is terrible. <laughs> okay. So this is the search engine for my blog, and you can see like how many searches there are per day. Um, you can actually like click on the search and see the trends over the last um, week or so. And uh, to see it in action, you can actually go to the blog and type Rails. So this is autocomplete, like a real search engine, and you can type enter and get the results like that. Um, and so that's pretty cool. Um, and anyway, my point is you can create a search engine really quickly and easily, and we have an API for developers and a uh, crawler for non-technical users and a WordPress plugin and an iOS library and an Android library and all this kind of stuff. So if you are building a product and you want to add search to it, check out SwiftTech. All right. <laughs> Finish with 11 seconds to spare. Who's next? Uh, three minutes, Kevin. Hi, my name's Kevin. How many of you are married right now? Is anyone going down that path for a second or a third time by chance? You don't have to raise your hand. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I work for a startup called Pahali. Um, we are building a searchable database of wedding venues in the Twin Cities. Um, we're starting here because we're local. Um, basically, uh, team of the original team of founders was all guys. We discovered that there was no good technology in the wedding industry. Um, it's all crappy, cluttered with ads. Um, you can't really search for anything very well. Um, it's all pay to play. Um, so what we're doing is creating a searchable database of over 400 venues right now. Um, so if you can think back to your wedding, um, can you honestly say that you left every stone um, unturned, like looking through your spaces, uh, all that stuff. If you're married, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm not actually married right now, so I plan on using this tool once it's launched. <laughs> um, so we started building this, and what we discovered is that um, there's a huge need in the wedding industry for better technology for brides and grooms to search for things, but there's also a need for uh, wedding industry professionals, so photographers, florists, especially wedding planners, to have a tool where they can manage their business, they can search for other people in the industry. Um, so what we're, what we're also building out is a planning tool for wedding planners um, to search all of our criteria. Right now we're at 20 or 30 um, different search criteria for venues, so think capacity, price, date of availability, um, think kayak for weddings. Um, you put in what you can spend, where you're getting married, um, and a few of your preferences. Um, and we, based on your results, um, we give you the best places in the Twin Cities. Um, we, do ex we do plan on expanding nationally. How much time am I at? I got a minute left? Okay. Um, the cool part, I'm on the business end, so coming here is like, I'm not a technical guy at all. Um, this is a cool opportunity for uh, industry professionals to manage their business, for venues, um, to manage their operations, upkeep their uh, menus, contracts, all that stuff in one place. Right now, most venues have a website that's running crappy old like Flash. It doesn't load, it loads in probably 30 or 40 seconds. Um, what we're doing is trying to bridge the gap between the technology available um, and the use of that technology, essentially. Um, so check us out, we're launching um, hopefully in a month here. Um, we are on social media. Again, that's Pahali, P-A-H-A-L-Y. Um, what we're looking to do is simplify the wedding planning process. Um, save time on every end. Um, time is money, as you guys know. Um, we're trying to conv convince people of that. Um, so think Pahali, um, simplify the wedding process. Um, check us out, thanks. Okay, thanks. I just wanted to add, I have a very limited number of SwiftType uh, stickers, and if you install SwiftType on your website before the end of the day and come talk to me, I will give you one. So I've been working on a digital textbook platform, and the main feature that's new is that you're able to choose the level of detail as you read. So to give a better idea of what this looks like, so this is an economics textbook of the first chapter, and this is a chapter summary. We have three different subsections here, and you can zoom into a section. And now this is more detailed. And you can keep going on, and you can get to the furthest level of detail. I've also written an app that allows you to make a new one of these, which is like this. It renders very similarly, but the content, obviously edit. Move these little modules around. You can view a graph of the entire book. 
you can insert new pages. And it'll render right on the graph. Finally, we can do a feature where you can zoom in to the same thing from multiple places. So now you'll see the graph, the two nodes there, these pages here, both zoom into that page. that clip. <laughs> yeah, I haven't, I haven't looked at it at a projector before, so. It's just a projector. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so trying to make nonlinear publishing a thing. Oh, and then just to show how this live publishing feature works do this and now if we go back to the content page and uh, reload it we'll see that the new content is there thank you All right, sorry, I'm not, I don't have my uh, monitor set up to split. I can't see what I'm doing anymore. Thanks for the, um, that short delay. This is a game that I've been working on called Wordfield. It's at wordfield.com. It's a combination of words with friends and Pokemon. And in this game, you spell your letters, or you spell your words with different letters. Each letter has a personality associated with it. Um, so I can, for instance, here spell cat. And um, over on this side, my T letter is is um, is this person who is a gregarious pilot who likes dilating dieting and when she is part of my word I get one word coin that I can use to acquire more letters. So when I submit this word, and now I gained um, some word coins and I can go into a marketplace and then I, I get to choose from additional personalities and different letters. So um, for instance, I could buy this N tile, which is six word coins, and that will give me a double word score when I um, use that letter to spell another word later on. So it's kind of like Scrabble, where I'm, you're buying your own customized tiles instead of just getting the 100 tiles that comes with the boring Scrabble set. Uh, that's my game. If you want to check it out, it's at wordfield.com. There's a s tutorial. And if you like deck building games like Dominion or um, Thunderstone or all of those other sorts of games, you might enjoy this game as well, especially if you think Scrabble is fun but boring these days. Okay, that's my talk. Thanks.
Hi, my name is Clay Collins. I'm the co-founder of a company called um, Leadbrite, and this is one of our products. It's called Lead Pages. It is a landing page creation tool for uh, small to medium-sized businesses. We allow you to create, like we call them conversion pages or money pages. So any page in your business that's re responsible for making sales, so like sales pages, um, opt-in pages, name squeeze pages, things like that. Um, so I'm gonna walk us through uh, creating a webinar registration Whoa. Um, <laughs> we have thousands of customers using this right now. <coughs> uh, so um, actually, let's go um, find a webinar registration page. So uh, who here does webinars to drive sales in their business? Nobody? OK. Well, we'll do this anyway. Um, so basically, you can find a page. This one has been creating 72% uh, uh, opt-in rate on average for webinars. A lot of uh, businesses use webinars to drive sales, especially in B2B context. And if they can double the conversion rate on their webinar registration pages, they can essentially double their revenue. So um, you, know, you can click on different aspects of the page uh, to modify the page. You can c change colors and fonts. You can upload your own templates. Um, you can... Um, change pretty much every aspect of the page. And um, what's really cool is it integrates with a, a whole bunch of uh, email service providers and webinar providers out of the box. So with a click, you can integrate with like AWeber, MailChimp, Infusionsoft, GoToWebinar, whatever, uh, and you're off and running. So I'll just click on opt-in form integration. Um, so we're using Infusionsoft, which is a CRM that's kind of like Salesforce, but uh, a little bit more for direct sales marketers. So I'm just gonna like click a list here um, and if we go to the bottom, uh, we, can, we can select uh, a webinar integration. So I'm just gonna click on okay. Um, and then if I go to, well, whatever, you get the picture, you can change everything. It's cool. Um, I'll just call this demo. <laughs> Please, oh, okay. Demo text, okay, cool. And um, once the page is published, it allows you to publish it. Um, you can either use our platform to publish it you can publish it directly to WordPress. So we have a WordPress connector plugin. You can publish it as a Facebook page, like on your Facebook tab, uh, or you can download the file and put it on your server. So um, you've got a page that's uh, up and running. So anyway, that's our product. And I'm done. Okay, um, so we've actually demoed uh, a mini bar before, so you may have seen this. Um, it's a loyalty, card linked loyalty um, uh, platform for businesses uh, and merchants. Uh, the way it works is basically, uh, this is hard, I can't see. Uh, I gotta, I gotta drive it. Yeah, you can. Oh, okay, all right. I could just mirror the displays as well. Right, here we go. Um, so it's, like I said, card-linked loyalty platform. Um, so the way it works, like I said, is with the cards. So you go in here and you register any credit card that you have on file. You can do as many as you want. Um, you enter in the information. Um, and then when you do visit, you sign up, you go ahead and you sign up for a merchant here. Um, and once you do register, you um, go in, visit, tender, buy what you need to buy. And then as soon as you do that, um, we track that transaction in real time, provide a feedback loop that says, hey, you visited this place, um, you spent this amount, and here's your reward. Um, so it's kind of cool. Technically, we're working on the credit card rails, so we're able to spot the transactions with Amex, Visa, uh, and MasterCard. 
Um, and the way the way the actual um, check-in works is, like I said, you, you already have, have registered. Um, I've got two punches here at D'Amico's. I will just simulate the transaction. It's $10. If I refresh here, there we got the third punch. Drill down, there's our third punch. Um, alert will come up. I've got the app on my phone if you want to sh if I if you want to see that afterwards, but um, it'll pop up immediately and, and show that transaction. Uh, and also the social stuff. So if you go in here and um, it actually posts, and this is something powerful for the merchants, social check-in, immediately branding of that uh, store um, online. So you can see that happened 18 seconds ago. So. Yeah, so the <laughs> once you do um, fill up this card, uh, the reward will actually happen um, again on your credit card. So once you do get that fifth punch and you go ahead and buy like a cup of coffee that's $5, we'll credit that $5 back to you. Um, against, um, in which way, calling our... Um, is she talking social or like, like, so the actual, like I said, the actual thing. Gotcha. Gotcha. So you actually go in and you buy something five times and then return it or what? Like, so it's all based off of the credit card transactions. You actually have to tender something. Yep. Uh, it is, um, it's all tokenized. So we've worked with Amex and Visa and they return us a token that um, um, we store. So we don't have any PCI data actually on our structure. I'm over. Okay. Oh, I got 13 seconds. Anyone else? Um, so yeah, you can see a history of your transactions, when it happened, the amount that you're earning and saving. So it's pretty cool. Um, we're launching end of month. We're working with Hello? local business. It's called Shuit. Shuit. Uh, my name is Roger Peters. I'm with a company called Judah Software. We're located in Bloomington here. Um, We've been spending the last six years developing a synchronization and, uh, and storage and sharing platform. And uh, we all have, uh, you're all familiar with iPhone and Android apps. You install an app. Well, we've, we've created a platform where you create a workspace up on the top there, and then you add whatever apps that you want to that workspace. But the key is, is that all of the data that's in those apps is all integrated together. So. If you have like, a, you know, you, you have an order system and you create an order, you attach the email that the order came in on, you attach the file that the, that the, pr the purchase order that the company sent the, the order on, and it all integrates together. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the, uh, so all of the, so when you build an app, all of the functionality of the app is we, we provide the sharing, uh, every, all the data can have comments, uh, can all be shared, so it's, so it's built on users. Um, so that's just a real quick overview of it. Um, the, uh, the main keys is that you create apps, the apps have at lots of functionality that you can access through an API, and the key is that all the data is uh, integrated together and can be shared and linked. Uh, that's it. We're looking for funding, developers, and marketing. So, that's it. Hi, crowd. Jeff Robbins. Uh, total counter programming for you. I run a networking organization ta in town called Angel Polynesia. What we do is we have quarterly meetings of investors that we get together and we look at new deals. So, this is very interesting to see. I'm interested in, in stuff that comes along as you're building companies along the way. You've got advisors who may tell you where to find me. We don't have a website. You've got to find me. 
uh, through, through somebody or directly, but basically we're looking for uh, uh, interesting breakthrough companies um, uh, that uh, mostly are technology related and um, uh, you don't have to have revenue, but you do have to have a product and you have to be very close to revenue or into revenue before I'm probably gonna be interested in bringing it in front of the group. We do three eight minute presentations of companies uh, every, every quarter and we usually have about 60 investors that come to each of our events. So uh, Jeff Robbins, uh, hope to talk to you along the way, thanks. guys, um, I work for Anytime Fitness and um, we found out that um, people were using these apps to track their diet and they didn't like the usability of them, so we created our own. Um, so this is Anytime Health. This is uh, for you to track your diet, to track your workouts, and to plan workouts. So right here we're I'm showing you the diet tracker and um, so what really differentiates us is that we created our own database of foods. We hired about 15 interns and went to town. And so as, <laughs> okay, we're not. <laughs> Pats. How am I spelling that? Okay. So we actually have like every single thing. We've gotten local beers, we've gotten everything. So you can, if you're trying to lose weight and you're like getting down to the little detail and I know all of you speak this science language, this is gonna help you greatly. And so some of the other things that we have on the site are um, that activity tracker. So um, if you need to enter in like a basketball game that you picked up, it nicely adds that in so you can make sure that you're burning more calories than you're spending. And all of this, not yet, but we're working with um, other fitness devices currently to potentially have um, adding them in with an API. So yeah, it's really nice, pretty easy to use. Um, right now it's only available for Anytime Fitness members, but at Amanda Ingle, I need feedback. I need a lot of feedback. So contact me on Twitter and I'll get you in for free. Hi, my name is Jason Peterson, and about five years ago, probably even a little bit longer than that, I developed an application in Microsoft Access. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kicking the old school <laughs> desktop style and actually porting, lo using lo log me in to look at it right now. I uh, had a few paying customers at the time, and they loved it. Um, and of course, how projects go, you just put it on the back burner. How many of you guys have uh, problems with weeds in, in your yard? Uh, a couple of people, yeah, okay, well, do you track them? Do you like keep track of the weeds? <laughs> no, but farmers do. They uh, love to track the weeds that they have in their uh, fields. Um, th it's one of those things where they love to know what that uh, they have uh, foxtail or south thistle or a wild oats uh, out there, you know? Not that they sowed them. But anyways, uh, <laughs> you have a bumble. Uh, so anyways, uh, w the reason I'm standing up here uh, in front of you guys is, is for two reasons. One is because I had some customers call me up and said, hey, you know what, we still love your app. Nobody else is doing stuff like you in the marketplace. Um, so we want another version. So now I'm bumping up from Access, well, I don't know, 2003 to, to uh, 2013. And so my, my ask of for you guys is uh, if any, any of you are doing uh, anything on the desktop space, uh, Biome Like a Pro, Access, uh, um, or any GIS mapping, uh, touch base with me. Uh, and of course, the other reason too is because I'm kind of, kind of, committing to this a little bit and so that I'll uh, talk with you guys again maybe next year. All right, thanks much. I know some of you heard me here. Sorry. Oh, thank you. I get to open and close. <laughs> Seth Golden once said make a ruckus. I'm trying really hard today to do that. So what I want you to do to, dem to uh, test out our product Go on your phone or your laptop, or your iPad, in the browser, just simply type that in and take our quick poll. I wanted to show you how quickly we can set some of something like this up on a crappy little computer that I have. And uh, the results will show up in real time. 
cf.voicesave.com. And as you can see on the screen, results are showing up in real time. Um, very easy for us to set up a poll, a Q&A. Um, we have all sorts of other ideas for this platform where people, instead of having to upload apps, everything now needs to be web-based so you can change it quickly, as I've just demonstrated. And uh, we're limited by our imagination. Um, I just wanted to be able to demonstrate it, so I'm sitting there watching the other presenters. Thank you, everybody. I was going to run a poll on who is your favorite presenter, but that would be overthinking it. Uh, <laughs> 22 of you have been to, uh, to uh, mini demo three times, five plus only six. This is all important data for Luke and his mini demo, so I'm happy to provide that service. <laughs> You've been to eight. Well, good for you. So thank you for your time again. I appreciate it.